So this is our exercise for day. I call it panning. And uh, it's not like it's a, a technique that you're going to find in a typical flash book. <clears throat> but what it is is just using what we know already about tweening and a um, little bit of drawing and animated symbols to create a, the look of artificial depth, whether it's in a natural landscape or something more abstract like type <clears throat> or even something like a photograph or a series of photographs. So here's two photographs just really quickly thrown together and they sit still for a moment and then they have this odd movement which gives you this feeling that you're moving upward and looking down more on these buildings. So this isn't 3D reality um, depth but it is using sort of flat artificial depth much like you'll see in uh, a lot of the games now that you find in apps Angry Birds being one of them where they divide the <clears throat> landscape into foreground, middle ground and background and move them at different rates. So let's take a look at what's going on here and to best get the idea of how this works I'm going to zoom out to 25 percent and you can see well, maybe we can get a little bit closer, maybe 50. You can see that I've got a foreground and <clears throat> the bee. I'm going to turn those cactuses off too. So let's, let's take it from the top. So starts out, I've got just a very flat background, hot yellow sky with a sun. And these don't move at all. They don't move one bit. Then I've also thrown some clouds on there, and those move just a little bit. So if you think about what we're doing here, um, if you the best way that I've come up with to describe this is that if you were driving in a car, and especially if you've driven out west, <clears throat> you can see for great distances, and, and objects that are in the great distance, or even here in the Midwest where I am, uh, when you're looking out over the rolling hills, maybe the moon is rising. The moon doesn't appear to move very much as I'm driving, but the hills uh, will move a bit. And the hills that are closer, so here's our middle ground, are going to move even farther. So you can see what I've done in flash is I have a longer shape, which moves a greater distance than the hills in the background, and our clouds moving hardly at all. And then in the foreground, we have a shape that is even longer, and moves even further. So if you think about this again, as I started to say, you're driving in a car, so the, the objects in the far ground don't move far away ground, not foreground. <laughs> the objects that are far away tend to not appear to be moving, but if you were watching um, telephone poles that are right near the road, or um, signs or you know parked cars or anything that would be nearby the road they would be whooshing by really fast so what I've actually done is I've thrown a couple of cactus or maybe one cactus in here um, and you can see that it doesn't even take the entire sequence here it just comes along and very quickly shoom, flies by so um, we could even maybe put another cactus in the very foreground I'll go ahead and do that right now grab my cactus out of my library and this one would be going fastest of all it would really fly by so since I'm not seeing it really quickly what I'll do is I'll just grab this guy and copy it and paste it and I'll put it on this layer here so this one will come in soon and I'll bring it up front and make it the biggest one now all these things moving in this direction um, of course, when they're closer, they're larger. And I've got some tint on this. Now, when you are trying to create the sense of distance, you can do one of two things. You can have the foreground be the darkest and it get lighter and slightly bluer as it gets back here. Or, in this case, I probably could have done the opposite where because of the contrast of the sun, this could have been very dark and then these varying shades. So let me take the tint off of my cactus here, get it back to normal, make it larger, and I want it to cross the stage very quickly. So I'm going to create a motion tween, make sure that it's completely off of my stage, and then without even having the entire time to work with, 
I want it to go flying across the stage. So it's got its motion tween on it. Here we go, moving in this direction. So let's test that now, see what it looks like. And now we've got cactus going by in the foreground. And notice too that my little bee, oh, I must have had another cactus on there. My little bee um, stays centered. And the reason that he appears to be moving is that because he's headed to, towards the right and everything is moving toward the left, it gives us the illusion that he is moving. So, once again, I'm not going to do all the drawing this time, but let's take a look at it. Background stays still. Foreground moves the furthest. And everything in between All right, pretty self-explanatory. Let's take a look at the one with the E's, and hopefully that will make sense to you too. It's the same type of situation. So <clears throat> this one only has three layers, and actually let's take a look at the foreground first. What I've done is I just took a letter E, and I repeated it a bunch of times, and grouped it so that this is actually a symbol. All of these E's are grouped together into one symbol called E E E E E. <laughs> Imagine that. And my foreground, let's zoom out again, is moving very quickly by, covering most of the distance of the symbol. I just I opted not to show all of the E's for some reason. Then my next layer of E's also moves pretty far, but not even as far. So if you look at these three E's. The upper one, they're out here as well, but we're much further in both directions with our top layer. And then the very last one doesn't move much at all. Now the other thing that I've done, which is fairly typical of things receding into the distance, is that I've scaled them back. So if we look at these E's, they are at 150%. That's my foreground E's. My midground E's which are slightly blurry and a little bit lighter, are 112, more or less, percent of the original size. And the very background ones are the most blurry, have the most alpha on them, and they are at 100%. So we've got a couple of things here that give us the illusion of the motion and that is that we have a larger scale, we have blur, and we have alpha. And then last, in, <clears throat> as an example here, let's get a little closer on this one, we've just got two basic images, and I did mask them just to make it look a little better. Um, we've got at the beginning this one sort of building image in the foreground, and I'm sorry, Yes, in the foreground. And then in the background, we have this picture of these lovely smokestacks. So if I lock them all, and I, I allow it to sit for a moment, and then the movement begins. Now, there's a scene that this is actually sort of inspired from in the Yellow Submarine movie, Eleanor Rigby, and uh, it does just this very thing. So these are just some fun examples of ways that you can use what I would call panning or artificial camera motion to enhance your flash animations.